For Krima Media's policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Action SA leader Hemen Mashaba joins me today to discuss his party's election campaign ahead of the 2024 elections. So, Mr. Mashaba, you went home uh, to launch your election campaign. And as Action SA, your three-year-old baby prepares to contest uh, in the general elections uh, for the first time. What does this mean to you and the people of Haman Skral? Well, it's interesting. Uh, you know, this morning, uh, uh, actually, I'm, I'm in KZN at the moment. And um, I just uh, decided uh, I wanted something to read and I came across uh, Black Like You, the book, and, and I read uh, the first uh, chapter, you know, uh, talking about the Haramuzi in Amanskral uh, when I was born in 1959, that it would not feature anywhere in, <laughs> in a big scheme of the world. But I think what happened uh, last Saturday Without any doubt, the Haramuzi has been put in, on, onto the world stage, not just really South Africa. Uh, it makes me feel immensely proud um, that uh, with something that I never thought uh, I would do in, in, in my life, uh, I one day finding myself um, with uh, thousands of people listening to me to sell them politics. So uh, when my speciality is, is, is to sell hair care products and sell businesses, I think, uh, the, and people of Amanskral, and not only Haramuzi, people of Amanskral actually really felt so proud. And even up to today, um, friends, uh, family, the, um, the people of Amanskral, uh, uh, I've, even uh, this morning, I still really get uh, messages uh, of gratitude uh, for, for putting Hamanskral and my village uh, on, on the map. And that's not, it wasn't my day. It was uh, Lerato who decided, says, guys, let's go and, uh, let's go and launch our, um, our 2024 preparedness and campaign in, in, in Ramutsi. And uh, luckily, it was supported, and uh, and it it was a historic event. It will go down in the annals of our history. And currently, your party, Mr. Mashaba, is the sixth biggest political party. And I know you are working hard, as you've already established, I think, chairpersons across all nine provinces. How has this benefited your party now as the branches are also growing? I was checking with my team regarding... Um, this IEC petitions. So remember, new political parties that are going to contest for the first time, they need to, uh, to um, um, have a certain number per province and nationally for you to be allowed. And and I'm so pleased uh, that uh, we, uh, as of uh, this uh, now talking uh, with, with the team, uh, that um, out of the nine provinces, uh, only two are left. And they are only left uh, with um, less than five percent uh, to uh, to to have uh, those two provinces completed. But the rest, uh, they are way over. Some of them are already close to to more, they are already close to fifty percent more with hundred at one hundred and fifty percent. So yeah, so Action SA is ready. We have been uh, assured uh, by the team that even the two provinces that are five percent short. Uh, by the 22nd, when we uh, everyone closes, uh, all of them will, will be over 100%. But we are not going to stop even next year when we, 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 we they come back. This is, they will continue uh, to, to, to filling in those uh, forms because I think it, it helps uh, to really give us uh, personal contact uh, with, with the voters. It's, ex it's exciting. As you are aware, we've already announced uh, what for... Uh, premier candidates. The rest of them, I was going to uh, to to announce uh, the other three before the end of the year. But we think it's uh, it's uh, you know people are already tired and uh, ready for go on, to go on holiday. So by end of January, um, we we will uh, uh, will have uh, yeah, if not all uh, by end of February, if not all. Um, the, there'll only be one left away. We, our, um, we, we're still really looking for for the right uh, candidate candidate uh, for that for that province. All the provinces by end of February, 
Yeah, uh, the, or the premier candidates will be announced. And uh, as far as the branches are concerned, um, we are close to 40% of the branches and uh, we are targeting to uh, to have a minimum of 60% of uh, all the branches uh, launched um, by the time we go to the elections. We'll have a minimum of 60% of the wards uh, with branches. But, you know, our teams are really doing some amazing work the level of commitment and voluntarism of our party. You know, people who've been in political uh, space for a long time, uh, coming from other political parties. So what is happening in Action SA? They keep saying, Mashaba, why did you start? Because we've never seen anything like this before. I, you know, obviously I'm new in, in, in politics. I got involved in politics because I um, I care about my country. I don't want to when uh, to when live somewhere else. Um, uh, I strongly believe uh, God will punish me, and I'm not really prepared to keep quiet. Uh, I thought, uh, and I think uh, I have an obligation to use my privileged position to help save our country from the ANC. But sadly, that cannot be said about uh, where you come from. A lot of people are still uh, living in uh, dire poverty. And when you spoke to them last week, Mr. Mashaba, you also told them that um, Haman Skral has nothing to show from the current government. Actually, Wikipedia is describing Haman Skral as a non-functional trans-provincial re region. And we know that uh, from what you've told us that more businesses have closed shop in the area. Tell us about your plans now to, res to resuscitate the economy and also stabilize the energy market. You know, Sunny, when I grew up, uh, as you are aware, I lost my father at the age of two. So I was brought up in a childhood household. But um, I grew up in a family and in a community where people who did not work were those who did not want to work. But the industrial area, um, which is one of the biggest industrial areas um, in South Africa, built under Botswana, was is one of the biggest in the country industrial area. That industrial industrial area used to employ uh, thousands, if not millions, of people because most of the big companies used to work uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, you know. So people of Amanskral and surrounding areas used to work. Um, uh, public transport uh, provided by heavily subsidized by, by, by the government. And, and people had a dignity of work where they were well paid without any doubt, not really, but, but they worked. Uh, sisters, um, you, you know, when they started working in Babelech industrial area, they used to walk, walk to work. Um, it's a uh, twenty minutes, half an hour walk from uh, the, our home to 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 the factories and good professional factories. Where over time, uh, they managed to really get the experience and go to bigger jobs and whatever somewhere else. Uh, today, you go to Amanskral, those factories. If I'm not wrong. Um, I can tell you roughly 70% of those factories are closed down by ANC government so that the people, black people can remain poor, uh, deliberately close them down. Because uh, if, 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 if it is not deliberate, why close those factories? They know what the uh, Putatswana government did to attract uh, those investments. Because to in attract investments uh, in areas like that, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. Uh, you give businesses incentives um, uh, to really be uh, to come and invest. But with our draconian labor laws, and not only in Amanskral, all over the country. So unemployment rate in Amanskral today must be what? Uh, definitely way over 50%. You know, it really hurts me. And I look at uh, the businesses which we used to be run by community members in our community in in Amanskral, uh, in the village where I was born. They are run by people who people don't know who they are. You ask uh, the um, uh, the traditional leadership; they don't know who these people are because the the political environment is controlled by ANC councillors who people know to be criminals because ANC uh, councillors are people who run shebins or the womanizers, you know, they someone who's popular for wrong reasons. 
Those are the people who are representing the community. So, you know, they see people coming into the community. When you ask and engage uh, the, uh, uh, the normal traditional leaders under which we grew up, they have no control over because uh, the ANC councillors are the ones um, uh, in charge of this environment. So the community, the area, it's, it's, it's full of foreign nationals who we don't know who they are, how they came into being. Yes, people, because of desperation, unemployment, they sell pieces of their land or they build the rooms, rent them out uh, to those people just to really survive. But what it does, it leads uh, to um, uh, social disruptions, drugs into our communities. Uh, like right now on a Monday like this, uh, go to a Amanskaral, go to Soweto or Alexander. People are drunk or, or this time of the, you know, the youth are unemployed. What they do, they turn up... Um, uh, to drugs and, and alcohol abuse. And ANC government is happy to open our borders uh, for uh, the drug um, cartels uh, to come and destroy them. And and unfortunately, Sanyo, while they're destroying our youth, they destroy our communities and our way of life. You mm -hmm. know, they, we've been so disrupted um, by this ANC open policy, lawlessness, um, People have got nowhere to go. You go to the Temba police station, uh, uh, the, the police are working with um, uh, with the crime syndicates, uh, including actually that using their broken vans uh, to transport uh, groceries um, uh, for, for these people in front of the community. So it, we, uh, the ANC government has uh, really uh, brought in evil. ANC is a case uh, to this country. I'm sorry to say this, but it's a it's a it's a case. Uh, they've destroyed our way of life. If if we don't remove them in 2024, next year, honestly, South Africa is not going to survive because uh, a, a prosperous South African ANC cannot co coexist in one uh, space. One of them has got to die. If black people, uh, black youth. Don't remove ANC from government next year. Then they must accept the consequences that South Africa is going to die. It's going to be a failed state. And Mr. Mashaba, you believe that social grants still play a vital role uh, to those who have no income, especially. Tell us about your proposed uh, universal basic income stimulus package. And you also told uh, the people at the launch that it will definitely be more than 350. Well, uh, tell me, uh, Sonia, can you live on three and a half thousand rands a month? You, you can't live on three and a half, three, ten times what this government is giving. But what we are seeing as Action as a when when you are sitting in a situation where 54 percent of your people live below the bread line, as government uh, absolutely need to come out with short term intervention me measures. Yeah, and that's what we propose as Action as a because as Action as a will immediately embark on making sure that those South Africans that require intervention, we, we help them. But at the same time, we deal with these draconian laws. We deal with the reopening of these factories where no union will ever, ever have a, a veto right on our economic policies. So that when people want to work, we don't have... Um, uh, the COSA to uh, the closing the businesses uh, down. We will incentivize businesses uh, to op open and hire our, uh, hire our people. It is for that reason we are seeing as Action SA, please don't judge us about how many grants uh, we, we give uh, a year. Judge us on what we take from the ANC and how many people will take uh, them out of uh, that um, social grant system because people will work and be really be able to to um, uh, to fend for themselves. And obviously, once you bring down the number, obviously you can then offer more to those who are unable. And those who are unable must mainly be uh, elderly people, the, uh, physically disadvantaged people who are not uh, able uh, to work, but not uh, 14, 15 year old young girls. Uh, but by the time they reach 20, they've got three kids um, and, and so forth. So, you know, we, yes, we accept that um, 
the mess that ANC has created, there has to really be an intervention. But we, the plan is to ensure that uh, we, 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 we unleash the economic uh, commercial of, of the country so that the Babelech industrial area Harangua, where I started Black Lagby in 1985. I mean, it hurts me because in, in February, when I launched the, the South African Dream, I launched that South African Dream in, in front of the factory, 200 square meter factory. I mean, in 1985, that industrial area in Harangua, and I'm no longer talking about Amanskara, was a hive of activity. We had big companies there, breweries, BMW, PG Glass, um, you know, you can name them. People of Harangua used to work, um, walk to work because I used to employ lots of people. When we started, I started my business with my wife and two partners. We'll hire one person. Within a year, we'd, uh, we were already employing over 100 uh, people. Yeah, that industrial area. In fact, next to that industrial area, I remember when I uh, on the day when I went to launch uh, the um, the South African Dream, uh, mm -hmm. the the offices which used to be called Buputatwana Development Corporation uh, offices, where you, they were helping the industry, the, the the all the factories, uh, their offices. Those offices today, as I'm talking to you, they are Sasa offices. Wow. Mm -hmm. Government is using them for Sasa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, those offices, uh, when I started business in 1985, those offices, uh, they were owned by the government to assist uh, businesses in the area. So today in the New South Africa, the, um, those offices, instead of uh, assisting uh, their businesses, they are they're now there to, to give grants uh, to people. What about the ones in Babelechina, uh, Manskra? Their offices are vandalized. They are closed down, vandalized. Mm -hmm. The bank next door, Standard Bank used to be, used to have a big Standard Bank. They closed, uh, I think, about 10, 15 years ago or even longer. It's, it's, it's tragic what the ANC government really has done. You know, what the Russians taught them while we thought they were in exile, being trained uh, to, uh, to come and remove the, uh, the, the, the apartheid government, and grow this country. Unfortunately, the, the the Russians focused on training them to destroy, and that's what they do. And 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 what is actually quite unfortunate for me was that while they were training them to uh, to destroy, they also got in touch with international uh, crime syndicates, more especially the drug uh, syndicates. That's why they opened uh, our borders uh, to drug syndicates uh, to to um, to come and destroy our youth and our and our families and our way of life and mr mashaba almost all political parties are promising um, south africans an end uh, to load shedding which is also a huge deterrent uh, to creating a conducive environment for job creation what is your comment now on the appointment of the new escom ceo uh, mr dan marukan do you think he has what it takes uh, to keep the lights on? Well, unfortunately, uh, it'd be difficult for him because I don't know him personally. But his success is going to depend uh, on the political support he's going to get. Obviously, mm -hmm. if uh, ANC's uh, leadership is still going to continue on looting ESCOM and he's not going to do anything about it, he's not going to, if he's not going to get the support of our criminal justice system, I can assure you he's going to fail. There's just mm -hmm. no way that uh, you can run uh, um, business uh, or ESCOM where mm -hmm. you, you, you have the hyenas waiting to steal and there are no consequences. Therefore, he's going to fail. It's, that's a fact of life. Yeah, the, his success is going to depend on getting the political will. It's going to depend on um, uh, to stopping the, all these uh, criminals and the tenderpreneurs who are milking uh, ESCOM. You know, you can imagine for, for him to, to think you can run ESCOM to buy diesel or any equipment, you've got to buy it through an ANC um, 
aligned uh, tender preneur who operates from a cell phone. You, you can't run business like that. See, if you buy diesel, if it's not going to get it directly from the source. I mean, if you look at the, the amount of uh, diesel that uh, ESCOM actually uh, uses on a daily basis, they can actually uh, buy it directly from, from the source. But they have to, uh, because of this black economic empowerment uh, uh, or corrupt system, they've got to buy from a third party, someone who does not add any value. So these are things that if he's not going to to be able to correct them, he's going to fail. I mean, that's uh, one. I don't have to, to, to be a rocket scientist or being negative. This is a fact of life. There's no way you can run business in an environment of chaos. And at the launch, you also promised that uh, your party will be introducing a competition to ESCOM. Can you briefly outline your plans uh, to South Africans? Well, uh, absolutely. We, we will allow ESCOM uh, to run on a commercial basis. For us as government, we will ensure that you put in professional people, we'll give them the political support, uh, but they must run on a commercial basis. We will uh, ensure that uh, we, we deal with the level of corruption because we will have uh, specialized units uh, that are going to be dealing with uh, corruption throughout uh, the, 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 the country. But mm -hmm. what we'll do uh, over and above that, we will encourage private sector investment to compete um, with ESCOM on, a, on an equal kind of basis. If ESCOM cannot... Um, compete uh, on an equal footing on a commercial basis, then uh, then uh, it must shut, its door, uh, shut down. We, we are not going to keep on uh, bailing it out when, when it does not really make sense. If the private sector can produce electricity cheaper and be able to distribute it even to poor communities cheaper than ESCOM, then, then, uh, then let ESCOM die a natural death. Tell us about your plans now to help change the education policies, including hiring the best teachers. Well, uh, first of all, uh, as Section SA, we commit to run one department of education, not two, just one de department of education. Um, that's the first thing that we will do. Secondly, uh, no unions, uh, the SATU, uh, will not really have a say who becomes the principal or a teacher in a school. That decision will be taken by us as government. So we'll take union out of um, the running the education of our country. We will bring back uh, in school inspectors. All these um, South Africans under 75 years of age uh, were who the, the ANC has uh, retired. We want them back as school inspectors, some of them will uh, we will appoint them as school principals because these are the people who with the necessary experience. Because the new ones who are now coming in the, on on board, these are thirty percent pass mark. So how how do we get someone who passed by thirty percent? Get them uh, to really be teachers. So we need um, the older ones who are still alive and able to work um, up to seventy five. Uh, you know. We are most well, we want to welcome them. And the school inspectors uh, must go to schools unannounced to make sure that uh, teachers uh, and the principals do what uh, they need to do. More importantly, we will bring God back into the schools. When I started schools uh, in Haramudzin Amanskral, uh, and uh, up to my, my uh, when I finished my, my matric in 1978, every morning before we, class, we start class, you go to assembly with uh, the, the, all the learners and the teachers. We ask for God's blessing for 10 minutes or so. That system must come back. We must invest um, in uh, teachers' training colleges. We must invest in boarding schools because of um, uh, we've got so many kids. Are you aware of about 35 36%? of um of uh, kids uh the, since uh the ANC came into power 35 36 percent don't know who their fathers are so they live they are being brought up by their grandparents living in in in, in an environment that is not conducive for good quality education we believe as section sa we need to invest in in boarding schools so that uh, these kids can be taken out of this environment take them to proper boarding uh, schools, 
and, and have psychologists, they have sporting facilities and so forth. We must invest uh, in ECD centers uh, in every village, in every township, proper run, not uh, to be places where parents leave their children when they go to school. These uh, centers must be the starting block of education so that uh, by the children, by the time they reach 10 or they start school, they can read for meaning. Unlike right now, 80% of the children in public schools, they can't read for le learning. And uh, this is not uh, an accident. This is deliberate uh, of the ANC to destroy us uh, and keep us as slaves and victims. And uh, that's something that I fight uh, openly and unapologetic about, that we are not going to allow this ANC evil to persist. That was Action SA leader Hemen Mashaba discussing his party's election campaign ahead of the 2024 elections.